Now, these are questions from your, you know, financial performance measurement. This is your next chapter after target setting financial performance. Quite simple questions, not very difficult. Let's see 16.2. The following summarized statement of financial position is available for L company. So they are giving you some part of the balance sheet. It is called extract from the balance sheet. And non-current assets are 31,000. Current assets are 35, 41, 250. And then equity liabilities. And they say, what is the value of asset test ratio? So your question is that how much is your asset test ratio? Now, this is a ratio analysis question. There are two types of ratios. First, I must tell you. One is called, you know, current ratio. And current ratio, the formula for current ratio is that you say that current assets divided by current liabilities. And we know that within current assets, you have receivable cash and inventory. Within current liabilities, usually we have, you know, payables and overdraft, etc. This is formula for current ratio. There is another ratio which is called quick ratio. And quick ratio formula is quick assets divided by current liabilities. Now, what do you mean by quick assets? Actually, quick assets means that current assets minus inventory. Current assets minus inventory. You subtract it. Why do you subtract it? I will explain you now. And then divide it with current liabilities. This is called quick ratio. And by the way, quick ratio is also called acid test ratio. This quick ratio or acid test ratio, it is the same thing. So this is what they are asking you in question to do. When I say that find out acid ratio, it means find out quick ratio. So quick ratio, acid test ratio is same. Formula is current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. Now, before we do this question, let me just very quickly speak about it that why do we calculate it current ratio it tells you about your liquidity it is called liquidity ratio it tells you about your liquidity uh, you know like your current assets are those assets so those assets which are converted to cash within one year you can see that this current asset means this is the amount of cash which you will receive within one year and current liability is the amount of money we you have to pay within one year. So you can imagine that current assets is cash coming in within next one year and current liability is cash going out within next one year. And you want to see that how much cash coming in and how much is cash going out and how much is your liquidity position. Let's suppose that your current assets are 10,000 and your current liabilities are let's suppose 5,000 your current ratio will be two. You can call current ratio two. Sometimes you also write it like two ratio one. You can also write it like this, that two ratio one. Two ratio one. Okay, two ratio one. Like current assets are two times more than current liabilities. Current ratio, current assets are twice more than current liabilities. A current ratio of 1.5 to 2.5 is considered normal, which means that your current assets should be any, you know, uh, around 50% to 150% more than your current liabilities. In our case, if I say 10,000, 5,000, it is two. It means that my current assets are twice more than my current liabilities, so I am pretty much satisfied. It looks like that I will receive $10,000 within one year and I have to pay only 5,000. So I can, you know, uh, how to say, easily pay my liabilities. My liquidity is okay. I'm not afraid about my short term payments. This is about current ratio. But the problem what comes in when we have current ratio, then why do we make quick ratio? We make quick ratio because within current ratio, you used current assets. 
and current assets include receivable cash and inventory within current assets of this 10000 inventory is included now inventory is something which is not sold maybe your inventory is not of fast moving inventory maybe it is not good quality inventory or maybe we will not be able to sell it so we want to see we want to see that let's suppose if we do not sell our inventory let's suppose if inventory is not sold then in that case will we be able to pay our liabilities or not i mean in the absence of inventory not being sold because inventory is in your hand it is there is no guarantee that you will be able to sell it so when i calculated two i am happy but this two i am getting this 10000 dollar i am getting considering that i have sold all of my inventory what if i i will not be able to sell it so we want to see our this current ratio excluding inventory you know subtracting the the inventory amount assuming that inventory is not sold in, and in that case you call it a quick ratio so a quick ratio or an asset test ratio it is a modification of current ratio in which you suppose that your inventory will not be sold and you want to see your current assets without inventory and then divide it with current liabilities so now how much are your current assets if you see here your total current assets are this much okay total and your current liabilities are payables only 60000 so if you want to find out your current ratio you will make a total of these three and divide it with 60000 that would be current ratio but we are not looking for current ratio we are looking for asset test ratio asset test ratio means that you will consider your assets excluding inventory so what are my assets now current assets if i consider my current assets excluding inventory my current assets excluding inventory are you know uh, receivables 40000 plus my cash 1250 i just ignore inventory figure and i divide it with my current liabilities which is 60000 and then when you will put a formula here equals to sign it gives you 0.6875 now 0.6875 this is my asset test ratio this is your answer 0.6875 here but i just want to make one thing more i just want to show you something more let's suppose that in this particular question if we find out our current ratio let's suppose we find our current ratio okay and in current ratio i will add my inventory figure inventory figure was 35000 okay i just add this thing into the formula why it is not appearing like this okay and then i just put it here and i make equals to sign my current ratio is 1.27 when you will see <clears throat> now by the way please pay attention your question is done question is finished here okay your answer is here 0.6875 now i just want to uh, analyze this situation if i calculate my current ratio current ratio comes out to be 1.27 okay it has to be current ratio or liquidity has to be greater than 1 because when i see this numbers it looks like that i have my current assets 27% more than my current liabilities 1.27 means 27% more because your how much were your current assets your current assets were let's make a total your current assets were 76 and your current liabilities were 60000 so it looked like that you will receive 76000 and you will have to pay 60000 so it's not very good it should be around 1.5 minimum but still you can say okay i will manage it 
you said no problem i will be able to pay my liabilities but if i make it like this under acid test ratio under acid test ratio you are including without inventory it is only 40000 so if you do not sell now what do you understand from here that without inventory my current assets are are only 41000 and i have to pay 60000 it means that if i do not sell my inventory i will not be able to pay my liabilities now this is a very dangerous situation it must be greater than 1 because if your asset test ratio is coming 0 0.68 it means your assets your your quick assets your quick assets are just 68% of your total liabilities and you will be receiving 41000 and you will have to pay 60000 so it means you cannot make your payment you cannot pay your liability without selling inventories so this is called asset test ratio i just explained a little bit more uh, because that was the first question so it was kind of a revision from chapter let's do 16.3 uh 16.3 let me make a little bit bigger it says that the following question is taken from the december 2011 exam a company has current assets of 1.8 million current assets of 1.8 million it means it includes receivable cash inventory everything including inventory of 0 0.5 so if total current assets are 1.8 inventory 0 0.5 it means that your quick assets are 1.3 and current liabilities of 1 million what would be the effect on the value of current and asset test ratios if the company bought more raw material inventory on the three month credit okay so when you purchase inventory on three month credit your liabilities will increase on the other hand your inventory will increase so within your your current assets will go up but within current assets cash will not go up receivable will not go up inventory will go up so when inventory is increasing your asset test ratio definitely is decreasing and your current ratio will also decrease your current ratio will decrease because liabilities are decreasing and your asset test ratio both will decrease you can actually imagine some numbers here whenever you are in such a situation and i would suggest you as students when i was at your age or at your level i was also doing such things that i made my numbers i said okay i have 1.3 my cash and receivable 0 0.5 is my you know how to say total current assets and uh, then i had my liabilities which are 1 million so i find out my current ratio which is 1.8 and divided by 1 so it is 1.8 my current ratio if i purchase something more so let's suppose i added more inventory my inventory will become 0 0.7 let's suppose and my liabilities will also be added to 1.2 let's suppose so then what will happen to my ratio so you need to play with these numbers just assume some numbers start putting in numbers and see the effect i can tell you that both will decrease um, we do 16.4 the following question is taken from the june 2012 exam an investment center you know that investment center is which is responsible for making investments and investment center is always a profit center as well an investment center earns a return on investment of 18 percent and a residual income of 300,000. so your roi is 18 percent and ri is 300,000. the cost of capital is 15 percent a new project offers a return on capital employed of 17% ROCE. So a new project gives an ROCE of 17%. If the new project were adopted, 
what would happen to the investment center's return on investment and residual income? So if you take the project, what would happen to your RI and to your ROI? So So your existing, let's start from here. What is your existing ROI? Your existing ROI is 18%. Okay. And uh, your new project will give only 17%. So when you are only, you are already making 18% and the new project you pick up at a lower rate. So definitely your return on investment will go down. That is for sure because the new project is giving a lower return. So after taking this project, your average return will be 17 point something, okay? It, because you are taking a project with a lower ROI. So ROI will decrease. On the other hand, your residual income, let's suppose that residual income before was X dollar. Now it will be X plus 300,000 because this new project is giving you 300K. So whatever you were earning before, because residual income is always in dollars term, Whatever you were earning before, 300K further will add. So your ROI will go up. So residual income goes up, return on investment ROI goes down. So ROI goes down and RI goes up. This is the option. D. D is your answer. So that was also quite simple. Um, then we do 16.5. Uh, pretty simple. I don't need to do anything from here. It says that an ex extract from a company's financial results for 2006 was shown below. Sales, cost of sales, and they just trying to be very clever. Sales minus this one is called gross profit. Okay. This is your GP, gross profit. They ask you, what is the gross profit percentage for 2006? What you need to do, gross profit divided by your sales. That's all. You just have to divide gross profit with sales. So I would say that it is 3450 divided by 5400. Okay. And just find out here what is the percentage. And the important thing is it says what is the percentage. So I put it in percentage and it says to one decimal place. So if I write 64%, if I write it 64%, it will not be correct. So you should pay attention that they're asking you to one decimal place. Must be careful, one decimal place. And when it says one decimal place, you should increase your decimal places like this. Your answer should be 63.9. If you write 63.89, it is wrong. If you write it 64, it is wrong. It is possible that sometime it is 64.0. Then you should also write down 64.0, okay? Because they're asking you one decimal place. It does not matter whether it is 0, 1, 2. Even if you have to write down it, it let's suppose your answer come exactly 64. Then you should write down 64.0 because he's asking you one decimal place. So answer is 63.9%. So let me remove this one, 63.9%. This is going to be your answer. Then we do the next one, which is 16.6. What is the profit percentage for 2004 to one decimal place? Profit percentage, just take net profit. Before they asked you gross profit. Now they're asking profit and divide it with your sales revenue. That's all. Nothing difficult. I don't know why am I why am I doing these questions at twenty four percent at the end of the chapter twenty four percent. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's all. This one, the following information has been extracted from the statement of financial position of X company. This is question number sixteen point eight. Equity and liabilities, capital and reserves five eighty five. Long term liabilities 670,000, current liabilities 84,000, total 1,339,000. What is the capital gearing ratio expressed as a percentage to one decimal place? Use the formula debt over debt plus equity. So, debt over debt plus equity. So, you need to just know that what is debt? 
in your case this current liability is not debt debt is always this long term so this is your long term liability this is your debt and this is your equity and you have to use debt over debt plus equity so debt over debt plus equity it means that i will write like this how much is debt debt is 670 i will ignore zeros because zeros are there for all numbers over 670 plus 585 this is how i will write down debt over debt plus equity put it here just make an equals to sign and it gives you 53 convert it to percentages and you have to give it to one decimal place 53.4 percent your answer should be 53.4 percent pretty simple 16.10 uh, the following information is available for company X 2007 2008 uh, by the way let me go back and I tell you what does that mean this debt equity ratio it means that within your total capital like debt and equity 53% of the assets they have been purchased from the debt and remaining like because if you see debt is more equity is less so actually for every hundred dollar assets, if you think that there is a hundred dollar asset, 53.4 dollar asset has been purchased from the debt. This is the debt. And the remaining is equity. This is equity. So if you purchased one asset, 53% was debt, 46.6 you invested, the shareholders, the owners invested. And this is actually a very high ratio. This is called highly geared up company because debt has increased than the equity, which means that your money borrowed from outside is more than the money which you have invested. So it's not a very healthy sign. 16.10. Sir, current liabilities are not considered, no, a, considered no, they are as... In debt, we talk about long-term liabilities or you call it interest-bearing liabilities. Only long-term are in debt. Okay, sir. 16.10. Uh, the following information is available for company X, 2007, 2008. Profit, 7.5, 9,000. Profit has increased. Sales have decreased. Ah, that's very interesting. If you see that your sales are decreasing, but net profit is increasing. And capital employed has significantly increased. Calculate the change in ROI return on investment from 2007 to 2008. So return on investment, you need to calculate how much was your return. This is return and this is your investment. So 7,500 divided by 37,500. How I will do that, let's me, let me make like this. This is my 2007. Okay, let me put it here. 2007. And this is 2008. And my profit is in this year 7,500. Here it is 9,000. And your capital employed because this is your investment. So you have to find out return on investment and your investment is 37,500 here, 60,000 here. So how much is your ROI? You just have to divide these two numbers, okay? 75 divided by 37.5. And you copy paste the formula there. And we can convert it into percentages and just convert it to one decimal place so that you can see. So your return on investment. Now, listen, apparently it looked like that your profit has increased. So it looks like a good news. But then when you consider it as compared to investment, because investment is also more here, you see your ROI has decreased, even though you are making more money, but in terms of percentage, your return on investment has gone down. So, and then it says that decreased from 20 to 15%. So this is your answer option A, from 20% to 15%. Then we move to 16.13. Which of the following statements are valid criticism on invest on return on investment as a performance measurement, ROI? So which is a valid criticism? Um, which means that the drawbacks of ROI. 
the disadvantages of ROI. It is misleading if used to compare departments with different levels of risk. Our valid criticism, which means that which are true. Okay, this is true because it is misleading. ROI will become misleading. ROI results will not give you proper information when you compare with different levels of risk. It is true because there is one department which is giving you 9% and ROI. Another department, it gives you, let's suppose 10% ROI. So if you compare only ROI, you should say, or you would say that this is doing good. I'm very happy with that. But the problem is that maybe you did not notice or you did not know that this particular department has huge risk. It may be making 1% more, but it is taking so much big risk that if investors knew, if investors only knew that these are the risks which are involved, maybe they would say we don't need this profit. So ROI only tells you that profit is there. So you are very happy and you jump onto the profit without considering that how much risk are you taking. Maybe the level of risk which is there you may not be willing to take that risk with that simple 10%. So this is one of the disadvantages. It is misleading if used to compare departments with assets of different ages. It is also true because some as departments, they have old assets. When you have old assets, uh, their book value, their balance sheet value goes down. And uh, I'll give you an example. And, and, and therefore the ROI will, will, ROI will look better. I think I explained this in the video lecture. Also. Yes, sir. You, you explained in the portal video. Yeah. So this is also one of the disadvantages and its use may discourage investment in new or replacement assets. It is also true because when you are considering ROI, so it will discourage purchasing of new assets. Because let's suppose that you have an old truck, which is for $50,000 and you say that let's increase or change the truck. So if you replace the old truck with the new truck for 100,000, what will happen that your investment will immediately increase, investment will go up, but profits maybe will same because the new truck is also almost kind of doing the same job. So your ROI suddenly will go down because you change the, truck, it means that you are making more investment. So your investment base will increase, profits will remain same and ROI will go down. And therefore you will be saying, oh no, no, I don't want to buy it. So when you are focusing too much on ROI, you are actually avoiding to replace your assets. So one, two and three are correct. And uh, do we have all four options? No. So it means that this is the one. But by the way, let's see, the figure needed are not easily available. This is false because these figures are very, very, very easily available. So one, two, and three, option number D. 16.14, um, a means of raising the production efficiency of an operating unit by the reorganization of work is known as which of the following? you are trying to improve the production efficiency of an operating unit by reorganization of work. Work measurement, no, work measurement is not, you are not raising the efficiency. You are just measuring it. It is not answer. Work study, yeah, this could be an answer. Method study is not, method measurement is not. Answer is work study. When you start analyzing your work, that how do you make your processes? How do you perform your tasks within the organization? That, that analysis is called work study. And the purpose of that is to improve your efficiency for future. Then we move to next questions, which are 16.15. Again, a theoretical question, value analysis can achieve which two of the following? Value analysis. 
eliminate cost, reduce cost, increase quantity sold, and increase sales price. No, value analysis, it's, it has got nothing to do with increasing the quantity sold or increasing the selling price, no. Value analysis is when you find out that which processes you have within your organization and each process, how much value it adds. And end of the day, what will happen, you will say that this process is not adding any value, so let's remove it. So it is to eliminate cost and reduce cost. So this is what value analysis will achieve. You imagine that whatever business you have and from the production of the raw, you know, from purchasing of raw material to production of goods and then to how to say delivery to the customers, there are different activities which are performed. Let's suppose if I tell you, let me give you a very simple example. I buy raw material, okay? I buy raw materials. These raw material come into this warehouse. Raw material come into warehouse. So let's suppose that you purchase this raw material and you bring raw material in your warehouse. And this raw material, it remains in your warehouse for some days. Maybe it remains in your warehouse for 10 days. Now, you know that, you know, uh, or probably finished goods. Let's not make things confusing. Let's call it finished goods. I bring some goods, I put them into my finished goods. You are my customer. You come in and you say, how much is the table? I say table is for, I don't know, $100. Next month you come back again and you say, I want to buy one table, what is the price? I say $110. And you would say that, you know, last time you gave it to me for 100, now you are asking 110. Why you ask $10 more? I say because this table, it remains in the warehouse for more number of days. I brought the table, I kept it in the warehouse for one month. And while the table remained in the warehouse for one month, I incurred some warehouse cost. So this is my holding cost or storing cost of the table. So you must pay for, to me $10 because I kept the table for 10 days in warehouse. Now, as a customer, you are not interested in paying in this money, okay? You say, I don't care whether the table remains in the finished good warehouse or it does not remain in the warehouse. I will not pay for this money. This is your problem. Why do you keep it in your warehouse for so many days? So my customers, they do not see any value in this process, okay? For customer, there is no value in this process and they will not pay to me. So through the process of value analysis, I will see that within my business, which different activities I perform. One activity is my finished good warehouse. And this is a non-value adding activity. Customers usually do not pay for that because it does not add value to them. So let's remove this thing or let's decrease this cost. Then there is a cost which is called delivery, okay? Customer says, how much is the table? I say 100. And he says, please deliver it to my office. I say 110. $10, I will charge you for the delivery. And this customer will agree that, okay, I understand if you are delivering the good, you must take the money. So probably delivery is a value adding activity. Customer is willing to pay for that. But customer is definitely not paying, willing to pay for my finished good warehouse, for my raw material warehouse, etc. So when you do your value analysis, you are, what you are doing, you are eliminating the cost and you are reducing the cost. 16.16 value analysis considers let me make it a little bit bigger so that you can read it value analysis considers four aspects of value what are they four aspects of value cost value exchange value use value esteem value Cost value, trade value, use value, and esteem value. No trade value. It is not possible. Cost value, exchange value, use value, and retail value. No retail value. Comparative value, no. This is the answer. Cost value, exchange value, use value, and esteem value. 
it means that customers are taking value from these four sources remember how do customer get value from your product customer get value from the product based on cost that it is very low cost for example if you think about chinese products why do you buy chinese products i we know that many of the chinese products they are not of the best quality but still a lot of people buy chinese products because they are getting cost value because for them it is low cost then you have exchange value that you get a product which what do you exchange you give money and you get the product so how much is the exchange value what you are giving and what you are receiving and then there is a use value use value uh, you know how easy or efficient a product is to use so there are some products which are very easy to use for example uh, if you think about these you know disposable cups disposable cups are not very how to say you know uh, best way of drinking tea or drinking coffee but they are they are they have use value because they are easy to use and the convenience is there and esteem value some products they bring esteem value why do you go to you know uh, probably gloria jeans coffee what, what does starbucks give you you can get a coffee for two dollars you pay four dollars at starbucks because there is some prestige there is some extreme value so starbucks is not cost value starbucks is expensive it is not giving you cost value it is giving you esteem value esteem value like the prestige thing is there so these are different aspects of value analysis esteem means speciality no esteem means prestige reputation prestige image okay okay 16.17 the following question is taken from the july to december 2013 exam period uh, a division currently earns a return on investment roi of 20% it is considering investing in a project which has a residual income of 1000 so our existing project we, they are giving us roi in terms of percentage the new project is giving in ri residual income in terms of dollars at an imputed interest rate of 20% what is the effect on the division's roi if the project is taken what is going to be the effect remain the same uh why remains the same roi because roi 20% in first scenario and interest in cash to at an imputed interest rate 20% and the project is giving 1000 so 1000 when it is giving ri residual income 1000 it means that it is 1000 more than 20% after paying out 20% still 1000 is remaining so this project actually is is giving more than 20% increase okay how do you calculate your residual income your residual income you calculate you have your profit whatever is this minus your imputed interest and imputed interest in this case is 20% and you subtract this thing and then whatever is left that is called residual income and it is 1000 is remaining so it means that the project let's suppose the project is giving 21000 and you pay 20000 let's suppose 20% whatever it is and you get 1000 so project is actually giving more than 20% imputed interest means what you pay after paying interest of 20% still 1000 is left over so project re, project return is more than 20% listen go back to go back and uh, try to remember the formula for calculation for residual income residual income means that what is left after paying interest so you are paying interest at 20% and still you are left with 1000 so it means that this project is giving more than 20% okay so if your residual income becomes zero if your residual income becomes zero then i would say that remain the same then it will be your case residual okay. income is zero it means the 
you are giving 20% out as interest and residual income is zero. So project is earning only 20% and 20 I was earning before 20 this project is giving, there will be no change if it is zero. But in this case, they say residual income is 1000. It means that after paying interest of 20%, the project still makes a profit of 1000. So it means that the project is making more than 20%. Maybe the project is making 22%. It is making more than 20% because 20% is the interest which you are paying out. And after paying out, you still have some money in your hand. So answer is it will increase. Uh, then we do 16.18 and 19. Last two questions, theoretical questions, these I leave to you people. Don't want to do everything, few things you should also do. 16.18 and 19, last two questions, you guys will do. 